Okay, hey everybody. Um, a lot of this video is going to be things you've already seen before. And um, since that is the case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do from beginning to start. And I'm going to fast forward through the parts that are really, really redundant. But not without at first just taking a little bit of time to explain what I'm doing at each step for those that may not have ever seen this kind of painting before. So what I'm doing right now is I am prepping my canvas and I have discovered a nifty little trick to the plastic that you cut off of your canvas when you buy them can be very, very helpful. If you line it up just barely over the wood and then when you take your bite, take it down too doesn't take very long this process but gosh does it make a much nicer much much nicer finished product um, and when I get through with this I'm gonna be doing the handy dandy trick that all of you know about with the um, tacks in the back is little feet on your painting so that it's not directly on your table when you start working on it out to some music which I'm probably gonna bring away but um then I'll clean the canvas and get it ready for it before and then I'll be back to discuss um uh see how it's a little bit loose if you bring it doesn't bust right when you reach and grab it to the back and flip it over and move it around so you can actually move it around so that's kind of a good way to do it and it doesn't get anything in the back while you work on it so smart way to do it um it's beautiful I can't see it but it's a little warm out here today so um I'm gonna start through this way didn't really miss much. A uh, bunch of uh, paint mixing and um, me getting this um, wash tub out and bringing it over so that we can uh, do our pour. What I'm going to do today is a puddle pour. And so I don't do those very often. Um, I don't know that I've done one. I may have done one. One. Uh, for for you guys on here at some point, but I don't really, I'm not positive. So, if you've never seen me do a puddle pour, then today you're in for a treat. You'll get to see one. And hopefully, if time allows, I'll have another video up in the next day or so um, with a some more resin pouring. But today, it's going to be puddle pour. And I'm going to reiterate since my camera failed and I had to stop what I was doing and redo everything. Reiterate that I have taped the back with the plastic. I've got the little feet in with the um, thumbtacks as you can see in the corners. And we've got a nice clean canvas that I have wiped down with alcohol just to um, make sure it was free of any oils or um, silicone, anything that would disrupt uh, 
<coughs> pardon me, I had to sneeze, that would disrupt um, resin from adhering to the canvas. I want to deal with just paint and the additives minus silicone. I'm trying to do this without silicone. So let me get this light over here a little better. We'll probably be able to see. This is a beautiful light colored teal turquoise that I'm working with here. Hopefully y'all can see that. And then we've got a darker version of that. And it ended up being a really big cup because I started out with green and I started out with way too much. And I wanted to be able to achieve the color I really wanted so I kept going until I got it. I won't necessarily use all of that. And then to contrast that, we've got this beautiful, beautiful, rich blue. Gorgeous color. Something on my stick there. It probably needs to come off. Anytime you come across something icky um, in your, your pour, it's best to get it off then rather than continue to battle it as I'm doing over here in the sidelines. You know, maybe you can't see, but I'm steadily trying to scrape it off my stick and it wouldn't come off. But it's off now. Alright, we got that. So now that's much better. Much, much better. There's usually a brown somewhere or an orange. Something in the mix to give it a more earthy appeal. And then nobody can do a pour of any kind, in my opinion, without some white or black. And I'm choosing to go with white. This is a little on the thick side, but that's okay. We don't mind. I can add a little water. I've been paying close attention to the consistency I've been seeing with other artists. And, you know, there's, a, there's rules about uh, not using more than 10% water because it dilutes down your, your paint too much and then it'll flake off and come off your canvas eventually. Um, so, I, you know, I try not to do that. I try not to add more water. But what I've noticed is really and truly in the process of them getting these paints to pour and the consistency that it flows, they're adding a lot more water. But what I've done is I've added a lot more Floetrol. Um, these have over, over two thirds of the mix is, is Floetrol. Um, I'd say, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's the highest quantity of Floetrol. You've got Floetrol, then you've got paint, and then you've got water. So we're going big flow trial, middle of the of that paint, and then middle of that water. So I'm kind of breaking it down in that way, depending on how much I put in the cup. So you can imagine if I put quite a bit of paint in the cup, then I'm going to have to add some more flow trial to make up for that, and you know just water to make it come to what it has to come to. So, anyways, you get it. So we're going to start and see what we come up with here. I expect this to have kind of a southwest, deserty, turquoise, rock kind of vibe. It usually does with these kind of paintings, uh, in my opinion, and I, and I really dig that. So, But uh, Melly D usually pours a beautiful piece, and, and it makes it look seamless, just the simplest thing in the world. And... You know, her, her paints are, are relatively, you know, they're watered down somewhat. Um, now, I wouldn't say they're watered down to a degree that her paintings are gonna come apart and they're all gonna come off the canvas. That's not the case. I just mean, she's not afraid to apply whatever amount of water she needs to get that perfect consistency that she has down to a beautiful science. And I think that's what my efforts are here even today is to try to get that same kind of consistency in what I'm doing, although it might be different than the consistency that she's using, it will be my consistency, and so if I can find a degree of measure of thickness, combination 
addition of Floetrol paint water that works for me that way, I'm, I'm going to stick with it. Um, and I really suggest you do the same. than the average brush would put on. You know, I'm not level. And B, a lot of my paintings now are getting some pretty serious uh, top coats in the form of resin. Um, I'm really, really, really digging how they look when the resin is put in them. So, that's what I'm doing. I've got the shakes for some reason. I think one salad day have that problem. I love this. I'm not loving this. happens is you don't like what what something creates and you take the whole dang thing off. It's 
gotta be my climate, my water, something. You see, all is not lost. Work with it for a minute, you end up with something that you're proud of. Those tacks in the back are not cooperating with me. Make sure all my corners are covered before I mess with it anymore or call it done. And I'm loving this. I'm not liking that this has a kind of a purple hue. Um, that actually does not make me happy. <laughs> so, since I've got so much of this dark teal, I'm try to cover over some of that purple. So there's just not so much of it. It doesn't look so prominent. prominent. Ooh. Lips were not forming the right words then. Now were they? That's the thing about this. I think, especially in the world of abstract, who can say if you did it right or wrong? You gotta like it. That's whether it's gonna be right or wrong. Do you like it? Did it turn out anything like what you wanted? Is it, is it speaking to you? Is it, is it making you proud? That's the thing. And right now this is kind of making me proud. Um, I'm loving this rust color. I'm a junkie for, for browns. I'm just adding them in here. Um, I'm going to swap it a little bit. Or... Yeah, I know, that's real obvious right over here that I swiped it, but that goes away in just a little while. Not so obvious now. Make that a little less thick there. Now. Now it's doing something more like what I would like to see. I'm loving it now. Put a little torch to it, see if we can get some bubbles. Stay tuned, y'all will y'all will look up one day and realize that you are watching my show live from Phoenix, Arizona. That's the thing. All right, and there it is. So um, let me uh, this. so um, let me uh, pause and get you down, and I'll get you a little close up. Stay tuned. This little studio. I need more lights. Well, this is gorgeous over here. I'm going to leave 
this corner right here is my favorite spot. Look at this. Is that not gorgeous? Right here. Right there. I can't ask for better than that. But maybe this. Look at that. Is that not gorgeous? This is a... Hmm, what size is this? I'm not sure. Okay. So this is an 18 by 24. So if anybody's digging it and you feel like this is the piece that speaks to you, send me a message. It's for sale. Well, I don't want to let my mom see it. You know how those mothers are. Like, ooh, I got to have that one. She's kind of a, a big admirer of my work. But she likes it when I'm able to make sales too. So, you know, I can't keep doing this if I don't make sales. Um, I don't have Patreon. I do have PayPal. Um, I think it's in the link if anybody wants to donate. I'm really seriously thinking about starting um, a little giveaway campaign to start doing my videos uh, more regularly, like uh, twice a month and doing a giveaway of one of my pieces, maybe like this, um, once a month. If I can get enough subscribers and followers that will be doing like a, a one to five dollar donation in PayPal um, as followers, uh, every time they view, you know, a dollar, that cost you two dollars a month to get in our drawing. I mean, raffle tickets cost more than that. So, you know, maybe if I get something like that going, then that will buy paints and materials and keep things going, and I'll be able to uh, keep bringing these programs. So, anyways, there it is, and you guys have a wonderful day. It's hot here in Texas. Um, I'm going to go get me some iced tea now. So, uh, keep making art, folks. Bye.